say real quick before we get into this, I, I listened to this and I, I, I had two thoughts. This is really, really good. And uh, I enjoyed it. And uh, and John's going to fucking love this thing. So am I am I right? Did did Kevin do well by offering this up to you? Did you enjoy this listen? I mean, it was all right. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everybody out there, welcome back to another Friday installment of the Audio Files, and you know what it means when it's Friday at the Audio Files. It is Viewer Request Friday. And John and I have discussed this next track, and it turns out John is going to be the one to go off and give this one a listen. Uh, we are both not very familiar with it. Well, I think John probably is more familiar with this band than I am. I'm aware of their existence, and some of the bands that they I would assume influence because it was through those bands that I heard about these these guys. Uh, but the track is by a band called Pylon, and the song is called Danger, and it was offered up by Kevin M, longtime viewer here. Uh, so Kevin, we are going to give this track a listen. John, I I touched on it a little bit. What what is your familiarity with Pylon? Yeah, so this came on the list, and we were discussing the you know ones we've heard and we haven't. I have not heard this track, but I know Pylon through REM and their cover of Crazy. Um, on my friends, kindly, he picked up this. I'm not hundred percent sure, but I, I'll take it out. It's plastic. He picked up this album, Chomp, and it's the proper one because it's got the serrated top. Yes, it's been chomped. I I'm not 100 percent sure, but I think he might pick this up in, when he was visiting America. But a few years ago, he they re-released a lot of stuff as a pylon box set that cost <clears throat> amount of money. And um, because he'd splashed out all that, um, he gave me his copy of this. So this is the only pylon album I know, and um, I know that this song is off their first album, yes. Gyrate. And it's on my to-do list and has been for a number of years. And I've never got around to it. So when this came up on the list, it's like, me, 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 yeah. please, me, me. <laughs> and so, yes, um, I'm really looking forward to listening to this. Great. Well, coming. now it's, it's up to you, 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 you to uh, go off and give this Kevin M suggestion a listen and uh, – and let me and him and everyone else out there in the world know what you made of this track off Pylon's debut album. Ten four. <laughs> Okay, uh, this is um, more of a sparse sound than what I've heard from Pine and from the, the stuff I've heard from the Chomp album. Um, 
it has got that very early new wave sort of uh, rhythmic dancey quality to it and I absolutely adore this this is fantastic um it kind of puts me in mind they're similar time I think I think they're later but uh, the au pairs British band um there's a bit of that sound to it but I think this is before them it's the same time ish but yeah that sort of minim minimalist really nice groove to it they do different things with the quite simple percussion but um it's quite art schooly as well in a way and that guitar just changing you start going into a more sort of cowboy riff type sound there i'm just going to bring that back a second but this sounds fantastic right up my street <laughs> Yeah, so just thought I'd check in again. I'm still absolutely loving this. It is wonderful. It's so light of touch almost. Um, uh, the singer, I can't remember. Is it Vanessa? I can't remember her name. But yeah, Mad as a Box of Ferrets. Always has been. Um, and it's this kind of sinister announcer at the top danger and just you know pronouncing weird shit um the guitar's got such a lovely light touch but it changes a little bit in the riffs it's just ever so slightly I, do you know what it reminds me of i don't even know what they're called but you know at school i remember it was the girls really made these things where you fold up a bit of paper and it ends up as like a diamond shape with four sort of triangles and you go uh, like that it's like every time he's doing it it just changes slightly the guitar it's like a more simple american cousin to sort of early pill work almost um yeah i think this is wonderful and these bending notes here and there so it's just slightly off kilter and that sort of cowboy riff going in. There was even like a pee whistle going on as well, which is like, I guess, early 80s. That's what they would wang in. Yeah, this is wonderful stuff. Wonderful stuff.
Yeah, that was absolutely wonderful. That song could have been two minutes long. It could have been 12 minutes long. It made no difference whatsoever. Um, I really liked how they sort of like went off piste. I don't know, down four minutes and five minute mark. Just the, the guitar notes were twisting and swirling. It gives you almost this sort of heady um ritualistic effect you know towards the end when she was just talking the last sort of half a minute or so it was almost like chanting this ritual chanting and um people get up inside their heads for it and, and get to altered states just for doing that and you could kind of get a bit of that within this um <laughs> it's so cool so simple you know Really, when you really break it down, there's bugger all to the song, but I just think it's fantastic. And the guitar, I love them. Bass, interesting percussion going on, and just like again changing it. It's almost the percussion sound is almost homemade and you know, ticking away and stuff. Really, really cool. Very arty. Yeah, absolutely loved this. And it was on my list of things to listen to, gyrate. And that's absolutely sealed the deal for me. Going out and buying that bugger very, very soon. Right, let's get back um, and find out some more from Andy. All right, welcome back. You've made it through the danger. I got to say, real quick before we get into this, I, I listened to this and I, I, I had two thoughts. This is really, really good. And uh, I enjoyed it. And, uh, and John's going to fucking love this thing. So am I am I right? Did did Kevin do well by offering this up to you? Did you enjoy this listen? I mean it was all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely love this. Um I do apologize. I have very scant notes because I kind of got lost in it. Mm -hmm. So I have impressions rather than details. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, I'll try and talk you through my thought process and the weird shit that was going through my head at the time. So, yeah, it starts off with this beat and there's a bit of hi-hat and then it's joined by what I've, I've heard this sort of stuff before. Um, it's all, almost, you call it DIY percussion. It's a clanking of sorts and I thought it might be pros prosthetic limbs. I'm not sure. Um, the female singer, and I'm struggling to remember... I think she's called Vanessa, but that's, I could be wrong. She starts mumbling away, and it sounds at this point like she's rehearsing a sermon, um, which, in a way, she is. Mm -hmm. The bass kicks in, and it's simple, but brilliant. Um, and there's some accompanied hissing from her. <laughs> and the guitar's kind of warming up like they're shoveling coal into the furnace. Um, but this bass, it frames the whole thing throughout the whole track. And it just keeps the song on the rails when everybody else is kind of hanging out the windows and running across the rooftop of the carriage. The bass is the one saying, come on, we've got to get there. <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, really enjoyed it. And then we then we're po we are posed the question, how much more new wave can this guitar sound? And the answer is none more. Yeah. Um, it's a perfect slice of like grit, spikiness, and groove with a really light touch to it as well. That's just a delight. It's part sort of Pill, Public Image Limited, part Gang of Four, and part Gibbon. I mean, it is just fantastic. I have to say at this point, the sound is more stripped back almost sparse really compared to what's on chomp although it has that it's coming from the same place but this is they put they put a bit more into chomp so this is a bit more and it really sounds like the beginnings of of new wave um i don't i think chomp's 83 so this is like probably 80 or 81 or something like that um this is the beginnings of this sort of sound um and it's just great it really yeah. is and you can really tell that this really influential um but i adored it the guitar parts 
and I can't really speak too much about because I've just got I kept losing myself as soon as I started listening to it. But it was this really it was very simple. The whole song's really simple actually. Yeah. But it was just these slight variations of the guitar and these little riffs. And you just go up a little bit and down a little bit and round the corner a little bit, two takes back and then stick his tongue out and then back again. It's just these tiny variations, but just enough. You can imagine people in, in the early 80s, it's a, that just changes a little bit. It's that signal for them to change their pose on the, on the dance floor. You know, Minimalist the movements, you know, just, you know, Check the watch, you know, mm-hmm. answer the phone. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just great. It really was. Um, and it reminded me as well. This is my thought process. I don't know if you have them in America. I don't even know what they're called. But there were these things you got at school. And it seemed to be only the girls that had them. Like it was a secret passed down the female bloodline. Um, and there were bits of paper which you folded in a certain way that it ended up as like four triangles. Yes. Connected, and your fingers in there and you're... Do, 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 do. I don't even know what they're called. But anyway, I don't know if they're called like, like question boxes or something. But they're like origami or something like that. You yeah, yeah, yeah. You but only the girls knew how to do it. The bloke, yes. you know. Yes. And they come up to you, I'm going to pick a number. And you're like, yeah. you love Julie. Yeah. And then run off. Yeah. And um, <laughs> I don't know any Julie. Um, but yeah, it's like each movement was like a different, from the guitar was like a different aspect and a different sort of option or, or possibility. And then it would change again. That's what it, I put in mind of that. Um, and also, um, musically, put me in mind of a band called Au Pairs, um, British um, post-punk, new AV band. I think they were after this, though. Their first album, came uh, Playing With A Different Sex, came out in 81. It's not exactly the same, but some of that guitar and that bass work, and it's a female vocal as well. Um, she's not quite so mad as <laughs> this one um, she's more political and stringent um but yeah there, there's a, you can see there's a similarity there and i'm guessing pylon effects you know influence them as well so uh, back to the song so there's wonderful guitars going on and i'll kind of go and swirling up into my mental vortex at this point the singer's throwing out her postulations like lumps of velcro and a massive mohair jumper and it mostly sticks you know this this these lines of danger, danger, sing about bit, and then he keeps, and then we get this fantastic little side shuffles with the guitarist, where he goes into almost like you know Johnny Guitar Western mode, mm-hmm. um, and it's got that sort of cowboy tinge to it, and then he starts bending the notes, and it just really, it at that point, it's like he's bending time itself. And things that start your vision starting to twist and, and bend as well with it. It's just wonderful. It goes on in the same vein for a while. And as I, I think I said at the end of the reaction, this song could have been two minutes, it could have been 10 minutes. It makes no difference to me, honestly. Once I'm in there, I, I was in there. Um, but as my mind started to float off, I, I, I got odd words and fragments I wrote down. So P whistle, because I think that made an appearance at some point. And bizarre. I don't know why. Um, art school. Yes, this had a kind of arty feel to it as well. Um, and the rhythmic nature of it was great. And voodoo I put down as well. Um then the video itself that this song was put over the top of, this silent movie stuff. Um, I don't know if this is a thing in America, but when I was at college, we used to go out to this club. And I think it was, it might have been Tuesday nights or Wednesday. It was one of the unfashionable nights. It was like cheap student night, you know, get in for 50p and all drinks or a quid or something like that. And they had alternative music. I mean, their idea of alternative music wasn't really that alternative. It was bits of Blondie and stuff like that. Yeah. But it was all done over the top of black and white silent films or black and white uh, animation. And you'd have this cool music. So a bit of Talking Heads and, you know, um, Tidroth Explodes and Blondie, all done over bits like this. And that was in a nightclub with all these TV screens around. It just reminded me of that. It was a thing for a while, and then it went, thank God. Um, back to the song. We have a breakdown of both the four minute and the five minute mark. I think the four minute one's a bit longer, where the guitarist now starts 
striking, very much to his own rhythm and tonal palette as well. And again, it's almost like time stands still at this point and he's and he's just hitting away. I thought it was absolutely brilliant. Um, and then we, we, we sort of come to the end and she's almost chanting at this point and muttering to herself in this ritualistic manner, like in an altered state, this fetish sort of, you know, gibbering. Um, yeah, I thought this song was simple but brilliant. It was a complete triumph. I think I said, totally my own fault, but it's a long time in coming. Um, and this completely convinced me. And afterwards, I went online, ordered my copy of Jar 8. It's in the post. I should be getting it very soon. And nice. I can't wait. Nice. Yeah, I feel like I could have finished that for you. Like, I knew that. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I, like <laughs> I bet you this thing is in the mail right now. Uh, <laughs> because it's very little surprise uh, to me. But yeah, this, I loved the, um, I loved her eccentric nature for sure. Um, I could definitely see it being something that would be polarizing to some, not to me. And I know certainly not to you um, and to probably a lot of people in our audience. Nonetheless, this isn't exactly radio friendly or she isn't, for, I would say. Um, I still really, really loved it. The guitars to me were just so good. Um, they were just all this different, the bright, almost flighty sounding at times, but then also very like dark new wavy at, at other times. It was just very interesting palette yeah. that this guitarist uh, chose to um, paint paint his picture. And it was, I, I really, really enjoyed it. I thought it was an awesome, awesome tune. Uh, but yeah. Pylon, this is probably not going to come to much of this probably isn't going to come to news as news to you, but for everybody out there listening that may have liked this song and not have any uh, previous experience with Pylon, they're an American new wave post-punk band from Athens, Georgia, United Georgia. States. So there you go. Um, yeah, the band's danceable sound, a blend of new wave, post-punk, jangle pop, alternative rock, and funk rock, Influenced the Ath Athens music scene in the 80s, uh, American pop underground. All Music wrote that Pylon's role as elder statesman of the alternative rock explosion is unassailable. Band members include Randall Bewley on guitar, Curtis Crow on drums, as you said, Vanessa Briscoe Hay on vocals, and Michael Lakowski on bass guitar. Pylon was formed in 79. The four members of Pylon were art students at the University of Georgia in Athens. Uh, Bewley and Lakowski began uh, playing music and attempting to form a band in 1978, though neither had any musical experience. Uh, uh, as Lakowski later recalled, a lot of us in the art school were trying, uh, were trying out different media with, punk, with a punk rock message, which is just go in there and do it. You don't need training or authority, or legitimacy, just figure it out. Um, which I think is very punk rock gen, just in and of itself. Yeah. And as we've talked about before, there are a lot of bands that fit this sort of DIY description that, that we've talked about in the past. Um, Definitely. Sorry, sorry, can I just chip in there? I would say that is the most positive thing. There's a lot of bullshit involved with like punk and punk movement and that, but this DIY uh, ethos that anyone can do it and just go and do it yourself um, liberated a lot of people and there's a lot of people who started bands and did stuff that wouldn't have done otherwise and we would have been much poorer without their input. Yeah. So that's the cool thing that came out of it. Yeah, I completely agree. Completely agree. Uh, they practiced in a studio in downtown Athens that Lakowski rented from Curtis Crow. The room was lit by a single 40-watt light bulb, so the band referred to it as the 40-watt club. <laughs> Rowe, who lived above the studio, recalled hearing Lakowski and Bewley's early rehearsals through the floor. A never-ending series of hooks. No bridges or chorus, just hooks. That's a quote from Crow. Just, yeah. uh, he, he soon joined the band as the drummer, stating that he had every song memorized before he approached them to join. So I just <laughs> him sitting in his apartment or whatever, listening to them and coming up with his uh, his drum lines <laughs> from songs and then going, I've got just That's the man for the job, you know? <laughs> um, so Bewley then approached Vanessa Briscoe, now Vanessa Briscoe Hay, uh, after joining the band, uh, oh, pardon me, about joining the band on vocals. Uh, on the basis that the band were fans of her artwork, 
which is an interesting way to decide you want someone to be your singer. <laughs> uh, although she was initially reluctant as she also lacked musical experience, although I'd say that just fits the band's motif. Uh, she auditioned for the band on February 14th, 1979, and joined the lineup. So happy Valentine's Day to her. Uh, over the years, the, they released several singles and EPs and three studio albums. Uh, with some help from the members of R.E.M., Pylon's reputation as one of the, the great underground bands of the New Wave era was solidified in 1987. Numerous musicians from Athens to the Athens rock scene publicly attested to their deep reverence for Pylon uh, in the film Athens, Georgia, Inside Out. I assume you're familiar with that. Yes, we've talked about that before. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just to say, back in the day, pre-internet, it was hard to get hold of footage of things like REM um, as a fan. And this was released on VHS. And so you had footage of the sort of musical scene in Athens, which was um, pretty much REM and start talking, mumbling away about his videos and his train sets and then visiting the gardens and footage of uh, B-52s, I remember, yes. big time. Yes. Um, and you almost get that correlation between Fred Schneider, is it? Yep. From the B-52s and Vanessa, the, their deliveries are very much a yin and yang. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So um, when Rolling Stone named R.E.M. America's best band in December of 1987, R.E.M. drummer Bill Berry said, we're not the best rock and roll band in America, declaring that Pylon instead was the best. Uh, the band toured with uh, a veritable who's who throughout their short initial run as a band, uh, playing with such acts as Gang of Four, R.E.M., the aforementioned B-52s, uh, Mission of Burma, Love Tractor, Talking Heads, and U2. Uh, it was during their tour with U2 in 1983 that the band decided it was time to call it quits. Uh, as according to them, it became more business and less pleasure uh, to carry on. So their final show was held at Athens Mad Hatter Club on December 1st of 83. The group would reform in 89 and continue to tour and create new music through 1991. And then uh, but again between 2004 and 2009. Sadly, though, in 2009, 2009 would mark the end of the band for good because on the 25th of February, Bewley died two days after suffering a heart attack while driving his van. His death brought the band's career to a close. Hayes said, Pylon died when Randy died. This particular track, Danger, featured on their debut album entitled Gyrate, which is now somewhere between wherever it was sent and your house, um, uh, and it was released in 1980. Uh, it was very well received by critics with all music giving, giving it a rating of 4.5 out of five stars while Rolling Stone marked it a four out of five star and your beloved Pitchfork rated it an 8.8 .8 out of 10. Uh, in 1981, Trouser Press Review, uh, Trouser Press Review of Gyrate, um, uh, their writer John Young noted the album had forceful rhythms and a kooky aura, jagged, broken glass textures, and an earnestly and earnestly overbearing lyrics. He said that the band had a nervous, paranoid vibe, similar to the early Talking Heads, and he concluded, "Pylon prods and prods and prods." Uh, and in his review of the album for Rolling Stone, John Dolan would say specifically of this track, "The most arresting moment is danger." An eerily, pulse, an eerily pulsing song that slowly leads you into the dark unknown, uh, into dark unknown space as uh, Briscoe Hay warns caution and I'll get you unaware, playing stalker and protector at the same time. So let's jump into these interesting lyrics by your gal here. Um, and I love this because every so often, and, it, and it, at the beginning is one of those locations, it has bracketed unintelligible talking so <laughs> that's what we yeah. Yeah, we've got some of that going on uh so unintelligible talking danger be careful be cautious i'll get you unaware look out i'll get you danger be prepared i'll catch you unaware look out i'll get you go for it be careful danger look out i'll get you unaware be careful be cautious look out then 
danger, look out, be cautious, be careful, be prepared. I'll get you unaware, unintelligible talking. Danger, look out, be cautious, be careful, be prepared, watch out. You guessed it, unintelligible talking. So those are the lyrics to this very interesting song sung by what appears to be a very interesting woman, um, mm. along with, you know, three guys who, who figured out, self-taught, what they're doing on their instruments, because it sounded really good. I really, really enjoyed this. Again, the guitars were chef's kiss. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Awesome. Yeah. Well, you'll have to circle back and let me know how the rest of that album is, if I don't beat you to it, because there are, I did want to check out some of this other stuff. In fact, um, full disclosure, after I listened to this, I listened to another track by the band. I don't know if it's on the same album or not, but it started playing and I was like, well, shit, I'm not going anywhere. This sounds good too. Uh, and it was. So, um, yeah, the really intriguing guys. I'd like to see them on the channel again, perhaps. So if anybody out there in the listening audience has another suggestion before we get too knee deep in these guys back catalog, uh, please offer it up to us. Um, John circle back, let us know how that, how that album is. Kevin, thank you for offering it up. Um, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe if you'd be so inclined. We're trying to grow the channel, and we cannot do that without you. It's a proven fact. So uh, we do appreciate uh, all your guys' attention and comments and you know the thumbs up and the sharing and all that stuff. It really goes a long way, so thank you so much. Um, also, if you have any suggestions, drop them down below, and hopefully John and I will see you, those songs, uh, and growing numbers on the next episode of the audio files. See you later, guys.